Well, hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, we're gonna be working on this Alice D17, uh, and in particular, we're gonna be working on the front wheel bearing. We've got, uh, the whole hub is pretty much locked up, and I need to move that thing around, so I wanna get in there and see what's going on. Um, so let me show what we, show you what we got going. All right, so I got it uh, jacked up here, and the front hub is locked up completely. When you go to spin it, it is tight. It will not move. Um, I've already loosened up the cap right here. I already broke that free. Um, if you're getting ready to do this repair yourself, you'll probably want to go ahead and break that loose before you take your wheel off. Uh, for obvious reasons, it's going to be difficult uh, to get that loose. So that's what we're going to be uh, working on. We're just going to see what's going on. If I can reuse the bearings and stuff that's in there, depending on what we find, then we'll repack them and uh, put them in. If not, then we'll put in a new set. So let me get uh, my camera situated here and then we'll get into it. All right, so step one, we're gonna take our cap off of here. Like I said, it's already been loosened up. Oh yeah, lots of, looks like just uh, dried up grease to me. We're gonna have a cotter key in here somewhere. There it is. That broke off. All right, I'm just gonna drive this out. Okay, let's see here. It's gonna take an inch and a sixteenth. Either a socket or wrench, however you want to do it. Get that castle nut off of there, and we're gonna have a, a a spacer right there, and that spacer actually is what loads up that bearing. Now, when this comes out, that bearing's gonna want to fall off of that shaft there, so. Just be prepared for that. I'm gonna try to drive it out. And I see it moving. And there's a lot of junk coming out of there too. Just a little bit further, and we should be able to get that thing to come off of there. It is so close. I don't want to get in there and pry because, like I said, I might want to reuse this if it's reusable. There we go. Okay, there's our bearing. Looks like it's had water or something. All right, our bearing is definitely shot on the outside. So, let's try it. I'll get you a little shot back in this side here. There's all kinds of dirt and junk in there as you can see. Pretty bad. So I'm gonna continue to try to get that to just come off of there. There we 
go. Wow. That was nice. That is a absolute mess. Look at all that. That came out of there. So, unfortunately, caught the edge of my threads right there. Should have protected those. I think I can get that nut back on there and we'll fix that. So now I've got to get this bearing out of here. It'll slide off and this is tapered as you can see. So once I get that thing broke loose, it'll just slide off. Um, but I think prior to that, I'm gonna to try to clean that up best I can, soak it down a little bit with some uh, probably PB blaster. Here's the hub. That right there you're seeing, seeing is the dust cap. Um, so it's seen better days as well. All right, so I wanna grab my wire brush on my drill and I'm gonna come in here and just clean this shaft up all around through here. Um, and then we'll try to get that bearing to come off. And like I said, I will end up using a puller if I have to, I'll hook in right here in the center and then we'll just grip that thing and, and pull him off. I've got a puller that will fit that, so I'm not too concerned about that. All right, so let me grab my drill, we'll get that thing cleaned up. Okay. Yeah, there's some rusted pieces here of that old dust shield. And I think I'll have a better chance of getting that thing cleaned off of there once I get the bearing out of the way here. So, let's see here. That bearing's pretty tight. I'm gonna try a punch on that thing first. Try to break that loose. You can see it almost looks like it's all one, all one piece here. It comes with the spindle. You can barely tell there's a little bit of separation right there. So I'm gonna take my punch on the back side here and try to drive out. Maybe it'll break that free. Um, I need something to grab grab onto that when I put this puller on it. So let me do that next and we'll see what happens. Wear safety glasses too, because that thing was throwing some sparks and definitely some metal shavings coming off of that thing. So, as I've mentioned before, there were some metal rusted pieces on there. So I'm just simply kind of knocking that stuff out. Just like that one, got one right here. I don't want anything to mess with my dust shield once I get it put on here, which is the first part that I will put on. Now you can see the difference in the machining. Got a nice flat surface and there's a little shoulder there and we get smaller than it tapers. And that shoulder is where your bearing will start driving on there. Okay, we got that cleaned up. Um, Next step is the hub itself. That's over on the bench. So let's slide over there. 
we'll get it cleaned up. We got uh, two new races to put in that thing. Quite a bit of work on it to do. So let's go do that next. And then we can uh, look at our reassembly over here. All right, so I'm over here to the bench. The next step is we're gonna drive out our races. Uh, if you can see down in there, there's a little notch right there in the casting. And that is the back side of the race on this front end here. So let me flip the hub around here. This is the race that we're gonna be driving out. So we've got about a quarter inch between the lip of the race to the outer edge. Um, so what I can do first to break it free is just uh, use my table. I got a metal table here. So I'm gonna flip that around. You can see the notch is in there. Put on my safety glasses here and we're gonna drive that down, hopefully until it hits the table and then we'll set it up in the vise. There's also a notch on both, on both sides of this. So try to get in position here. Probably not gonna be easy to film this, but I'm just gonna start driving down. back and forth inside those notches. So let's flip this around and we can see where we have now moved up where we're flush. So I'm gonna put this over here in the vise. Uh, if you got a nice heavy vise, this is a real easy way to do it. Just open up the jaws. I'm gonna watch those threads. I'm just gonna kind of tighten back down in here just a little bit. And that will allow the race to slide freely. Let me show you what we've got on the underneath side here. Right like so. <clears throat> Let me just tap this thing out and you can watch it come out of there. Not much to it. So we got our race out. Uh, we want to make sure that we know which way it goes in. Um, so that's on the outside edge. It actually flipped over on me. So it's going to be just like that down in there. So we're going to have the cone facing outward because we're going to slide that bearing on just like that. So actually on both of these, the cone faces out. All right. We are going to slip over here and do the top. It's a little bit different because we've got that dust shield that's still in there. And we can see that. That dust shield and all this should come out as we drive that race. It's gonna be a little bit uh, more difficult to get that to free up than what the outer race was. So I'm gonna loosen this up. And I'm gonna flip this over. And I'm gonna kind of squeeze him back down just a little bit. If I tighten it down, it's gonna to start to ride up on these uh, curves right here in the casting, so it won't hold it exactly true. So I'm just gonna kind of let it float in there. Same process. We're gonna have two notches down in there. These are a little bit harder to see, but we got one right there. See it? And then there's one over here on the back side. They're almost straight down from these upper ones. So with that being held in place, I'm gonna move my camera out of the way. Let's see if we can't capture that coming out here. Now, once I get so far, I will uh, We'll have to move that because we don't have enough room right in here for everything to come out. So let me show you what we got going on here from the top side. It has 
started to move and we probably moved it eighth of an inch or so um it's just really solid in there so i think what i'm going to do because the way i'm set up here in the bench when i when i hit that or on the vise when i'm driving it it's actually bouncing off of these when this is flipped over it's the pressure that's here i really need my pressure to be right here so <coughs> you can't see that but the pressure right up here in order to do that i can just flip it over on the table just like i did the other side like that now i got full pressure down here and i can drive into that and hopefully that'll speed up my process here so let's do that next um that might be yeah that's a different diameter in there so we just had this edge <clears throat> i'm trying to show you what we had here so there's a little lip just like i was showing you on the spindle over there you see i kind of boogered up the edge there from my chisel coming through or my punch Anyway, there's a different diameter between where you see where it's clean and then it steps back to this edge. And that edge right there is where that dust shield is gonna set in there. So I wanna make sure that I got this edge nice and clean. Uh, so I'm gonna put that on my bench, take my wire brush, and I'm gonna clean that out. I've got a larger wire brush here that I might be able to run all the way down in there and just clean that whole cavity up pretty good. So I'm gonna try that as well. So let me get that done and then we'll jump back in here and we'll get the new races driven on. All right, so I got uh, the hub and everything cleaned up. I got my two new races. I'm gonna drop the back one in here first. I'm just gonna go around that very carefully. If you can find something that is the same diameter of this, uh, you can use it. And what I like to do is take my old race and put it right on top and you can do it either way. You just have to make sure you don't get it stuck in there. Um, but you can use it to help start your new one. All right, so I ended up getting it out. <clears throat> what I had to do was flip this over and just tap on the back side of that bearing like a uh, race like I was gonna drive it out and then it just popped out of there. So once I done that, I come back on the inside here with a good flat square punch and just tapped a few times around the edge like so and got it reseated back where it was. All right, so that is completed at this point. Uh, next step. Yes, we'll go back over to the tractor. Um, we've got the bearing on the back side here uh, that we need to put in. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. If it slides on nice and easy, then you will want to set it in here and then go ahead and put your dust cap on there. All right, so our next step is we'll want to go ahead and put the uh, bearing in here. Uh, prior to that, we want to make sure that we uh, grease it up well. Now I've got a little uh, grease, uh, bearing grease packer that uh, came from Harbor Freight that you can put your bearing in there, put a grease gun on it, and it will fill up uh, that bearing with grease for you so you don't have to try to push and pack it in the old way. So, All right, so I moved over here to the other bench. Um, I wanted to show you what I'm talking about with the seals and the bearing. So first thing, I just want to make sure that my bearing and race are a match, and I should have checked this beforehand, but 
everything is good there. And then there's two different types of seals depending on what tractor you got, not necessarily for the D17, but uh, these hubs can accommodate a seal that's like this seal. Uh, you've got a retainer piece uh, that goes in like so, and then inside of that's actually this seal, and that's the dust shield. So this would uh, go around the spindle, of course. Once everything is assembled, this is in there, and then that would look like that. So that would be, again, driven down in the hub. This hub is smaller, so it won't accommodate this. But you could have that seal if you're on the 100 series Alice tractors uh, that would go in there. In our case, we do not have that. We've got a felt seal like this one that literally just sets down in there like that, and that will help keep the dust and everything out once everything is in place. So if you're using this style of seal, you can go ahead and assemble your bearing and the seal, because you won't be able to do that once the hub and everything is going on. Um, but then you gotta make sure that the bearing will slide over the spindle. If it doesn't slide over the spindle, then you're gonna be fighting trying to get that thing on. So let's slide back over here to our spindle. And I want to double check this one, even though we're going to assemble it uh, differently. We're actually going to go ahead and put the bearing and everything on here with our felt seal. So let me grab the seal. Slide over here. So you're going to put your felt seal on first. And then your ba bearing is going to go on. So you got to make sure that the cone's facing you because everything's going to slide in from the outside. And... If your spindle is nice and clean, then this bearing should slide right on. You gotta get it just right. And I tried this earlier and it went. Of course, right as soon as I get on camera here, it's a different story. There we go. All right, so it's not all the way back. I'm gonna tap it back in just a little bit here just to make sure that we're all the way back where we need to go and then uh, actually prior to that I didn't go over this but I'm going to fill this full of grease so let me see if I can pull this back off okay let's slide back up over here to the bench real quick and I'm going to show you how I pack these bearings I've already got the front one right there done but I got this little setup from Harbor Freight. A pretty inexpensive little tool here that will save you a lot of time. Okay. Rounded side, face down. Now we're going to apply the grease here. And we're not going to be able to see it. You have to trust me when I tell you that it'll fill up that, that bearing. One key thing too is don't tighten this down very hard because it, this whole assembly will spin in there and it just makes it tricky for getting it out. Okay. Now you can see our bearing in here is been fully filled. And ready to go. Okay, I am going to slide over to the tractor here. We'll go ahead and put this on the shaft. The spindle, I should say. All right, so I'm going to try to do this and not cover my camera. All right, so I've already got my dust shield on, but the tapered part towards the outside. Just want to make sure it went all the way back in. And it felt like it did. 
All right. Yep, it's good to go at this point. Let me grab the hub and then we'll slide it on. All right, here's the hub. We're gonna slide it on. Put it right back over the whole assembly. Now up front here, we're just gonna take our front bearing. It's already been packed with grease. I'm gonna slide it on. Like so. Get my nasty glove out of the way here. I'm gonna take the spacer, put it on. That's what's gonna set the load. Castle nut. And I've got a cotter pin that I will get here in a minute. I'm gonna tighten this down. I'm gonna grab a socket and then we'll set the loading on this and then we'll wrap it up. All right, so it takes an inch and six and one sixteenth socket here. And all I'm gonna do is just feel, I'm gonna tighten this thing up here, how tight that hub is. So I'll put him fairly tight and I'm gonna back it off just a bit. I'm gonna make sure all my bearings are loaded good. That feels very good. I'm gonna turn him just a smidge. And let's see where our cotter pin needs to go right there. So five thirty seconds is the size on that pin. I like that. That feels good. It's not just winging when I spin it here, but it's pretty loose. And that'll get better too as everything moves. There's no in and out play. So that's good. Now the uh, my cotter pin here is a little bit too long. So I'm just gonna cut part of that off. Bend him over here. That's pretty much it. Lastly, we'll solder our cap back on here. And then I'll probably tighten it all the way down once I get, and it's pretty snug there, but I'll put a little more uh, turn to it once I get my wheel and everything remounted on here. All right, one last thing here that I did not mention, I wanted to go over the part numbers for that bearing kit. The bearing kit can, can uh, come from A&I. This came from my Agco dealer. Uh, this is what they sent me. So it looks like it's a A-WBK-AC1 wheel bearing kit. Not sure what that is in the Alice world. But inside that kit, you'll have your front, uh, let's see, this was the rear bearing and race, then the dust shield, which actually all this stuff was just cut and it was all together, so I just knocked the inner part out. There's your dust shield, and then the front bearing was just laying loose in here, so I don't know what its specific number was. So anyway, that'll get you going on that. All right, so that's gonna complete that D17 front wheel bearing replacement. A pretty easy process there. Um, that's the best way that I've found to do it. Hopefully this helps you if you're getting ready to tackle one and not quite sure what to expect, you can watch this video and uh, get an idea on how to tackle it. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. Uh, Happy New Year. And we'll see you next time.